But how's your dating life going? It isn't. You haven't been on any dates? No. Met anybody? No. Are you even on dating apps? No. Plan on getting on dating apps? No. So you're just happy being single? No. Do you have a will to live? No. <laughs> Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll talk about women in their 30s who are single. We'll explore their lives and how they describe their eternal singleness. We want to invite you to smash that like button. Let's support the movement. Subscribe to the channel. That's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who needs it. Without further introduction, let's get started. my 30s. No, I'm not dating for fun. I'm dating to find a husband. <laughs> Get it together. I'm in my 30s. How am I? Oh, I'm tired. I'm in my 30s. I'm grown. So don't play with me. I'm in my 30s. I'm always wearing sunblock. I'm in my 30s. You trying to be outside. I'm trying to be overseas. I'm in my 30s. Of course, I'm still hungover from last week. I'm in my 30s. I can spot red flags from a mile away. I'm in my 30s. Of course it's the new 20s. I'm in my 30s. Of course I'm trying to go furniture shopping. Let's go now. I'm in my 30s. Am I having a midlife crisis? Perhaps. I'm in my 30s. Of course I don't play about my sleep. I'm in my 30s, so of course I'm trying to travel. So do you have a passport? TSA pre-check? Global entry? No? Being in your 30s, you've definitely hit the wall. Here's the thing. Women have this need for attention. Many women today are single because of their own decisions. These decisions can be good or bad, but in the end, it's up to you. Women have created this epidemic of singleness, starting with feminism, coaches who tell them to go for the rich guy, apps where only chads succeed, living to show off a life on social media, and those who, as soon as they get 50,000 followers, start working on the blue app. But you know what the main reason is? None of them want the average guy. They all want a winner. They don't want to bet on a man's potential like women used to. Women used to marry an average guy and build from there until they were well off. Now, women want a man who is already well off so they can just show up with their presence. That's why they never find a partner because they consider every man insufficient. First off, it's great that you have a house, you have a career, you can cook. Those are all fine things when you're in your 40s looking for a relationship. But I'm going to tell you, those things don't matter to guys in their 40s. Guy in his 40s here who appreciates a strong, independent woman, but, you know, hit me with it. First off, don't be so independent. Don't be such an independent woman that you don't need anything. Men want to be needed. I will never understand this obsession with being needed as opposed to being wanted. And I ask this in all seriousness. How insecure must you be that your partner must be dependent on you? That you must ensure that they stick around not because they want to, but because they feel like they can't choose to leave, even if they want to. We come to you and we're trying to relationship with you. Go, oh, you're indifferent to our presence. We're not going to stick around. Now, I am actually in total agreement here. If somebody is indifferent to you, you shouldn't stick around. And want to be uh, wanted. First off, we want to be useful. If you only feel wanted when you feel useful, that's a you problem. And that is not something you should be taking into an adult relationship. So in your 40s, hopefully you've taken care of yourself. Some people let themselves go. Oh, no, 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 no. The only way it could get worse would be if you told her that she has to be nice and sweet and smile. Secondly, is to be nice. The last thing is to be affectionate. That's it. I'm out. Stop it. Get some help. These simps are the real problem with women because they always tell them what they want to hear, never the truth. That's why many women, instead of thinking about what they might be doing wrong, just become more empowered. Brother, in this video, the word need was misused. What he meant to say is that we want to be a part of your life, not to be overlooked. A man doesn't want to make a woman dependent on him but he does want her to see him with admiration and understand that she can count on him. And this is where roles come in. A man feels loved when a woman gives him affection, takes care of him intimately, 
prepares his meals, listens to him, performs acts of service, and motivates him. That man feels loved. But if you take away a man's role as a provider, protector, and supporter because you can do all that by yourself, what function does the man have in your life? Will he just be your nighttime plaything? That's why there are relationship roles. A masculine man doesn't adapt to the role of being the woman. A masculine woman has a hard time finding a man who wants to be with her. So, instead of focusing only on what she can give to a man, she should also give him access to her life and leave space for him to be the man. So I turned 30 in like six weeks and I've been single my whole life and I don't really know of any other people who are in the same position. I've got people who are like, oh my God, I've been single for so long. And like, you know, it's been like three years since my partner broke up with me and I'm there like, I never had a partner. Um, and I don't really know, like no one, none of my friends, no one in my circle, I haven't really met anybody who actually is in the same position. I know there's people out there. So hopefully this reaches the right people. I mean, technically I did have a boyfriend when I was like 11, um, but we never broke up and then we went on summer holiday. So I guess technically you could say that we were actually still together. So I've either never been in a relationship or I've only ever been in one. <laughs> Jokes. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really weird thing because society expects you by certain ages to hit certain milestones, including partner, house, marriage, kids. And I'm like, I have none of those things. And when you're single and you've always been single, you have to plan your life as a single person. Like when I think about the future, I can't plan my life with a partner in mind because I don't have that right now. And yeah, that's how I feel at least. I plan my life as a single person. What are the things I want to do? I want to travel. I want to run my business. And if someone comes along and I fall madly in love and we have the best life together ever, amazing. But I think when you've never had a partner, you can't imagine what it's like to actually be in a relationship, to actually like have your person. So yeah, don't really know what I'm trying to say, but are there anybody else who has this? <laughs> Is there anybody else in the same position? Let me know. You know what makes me laugh about all this? I always hear feminists say, you should be independent. You can do everything by yourself. Don't be a housewife. Be the big boss. All that toxic empowerment. They talk as if every woman who follows that path will be successful in life. This woman is a prime example of the 80% of women who go down that path. No kids, no husband, no house, no friends, and not the big boss either. In short, her life is a mess. She's just wandering around, waiting to see which man will approach her. Luckily, she's not broke and hasn't reached the point of depression or therapy yet, which are other issues. But according to an article, women are happier single. Even though we see women posting videos with signs saying, I'm single, nobody wants me. Many women today have found purpose in their lives when they got married and had children. They found a reason to live again. That's why you see them wandering around the world because they can't find a place. They know that the moment they settle down for a while, the depression of hitting the wall will destroy them because the wall doesn't forgive. <laughs>
Just as there are bad relationships, there are millions of very good ones. But she likes to talk from the worst case scenario. That's why we see more women talking about relationships with men or referring to housewives as if they live in hell, even though they've never been close to experiencing something like that. This is where I say, aren't they supposed to be happier single? Then why do they post pictures with messages like, men don't want me because of my age, I'm single, look at my boring single life, or here I am loving myself? Tell me, isn't that just trying to get attention from men? I advise them to bet on the potential of a man before it's too late, especially those in their 40s, because the wall doesn't forgive. I've been single for 30 years. I turned 30 on Friday. I've never had a partner. And people always say to me, like, oh my God, you must be the problem. Like, if you've been single this long, you haven't found the one, you've not found the right partner. Like, what are you doing wrong? And I have an analogy for you. If someone in their 30s was like, you know, I've kind of jumped around a few jobs. I've worked in retail. I um, worked in the cinema. You know, then I went and I tried accounting and I sort of didn't really like it. And and I kind of did a bit of this and I did a bit of that. And, you know, they had quite a few jobs on their CV. They hadn't found the career that really was for them that they were like really excited about. I felt they were really good at. What would you say? You wouldn't be like, oh, my God. Like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just, like, stop and get a job? You'd be, you'd have compassion and you'd be like, oh, oh do you know what? Just keep people. looking for the thing that, like, lights you up, for the th either the thing that you're passionate about or the thing that you're really good in. New jobs get created all the time. It's okay. You're just not in your career era right now. That is the same with love. Like, I'm just obviously not in my love era. I'm in my dating era. I've dated a lot. I've got a lot of stories, but I just haven't found my person yet or some of my people. I think we've got multiple soulmates or persons for us but haven't found any of them and that's okay that doesn't make me a bad person that doesn't mean i'm doing anything wrong that doesn't mean there's something wrong with me it just means that's the way the cookies crumbled also i never moan about it i'm not like mm, well, poor me i've been single my whole life it's more of just like i'm sharing my experience with people because i think people find it so weird they can't actually get their head around it but for me it's just so normal I've learned how to be extremely independent. Now, obviously, I need to ensure that I don't become hyper-independent, that I can't depend on someone else. But I know so much about myself. I know myself. I know my boundaries. I know all of those things. So it's only had a positive impact, really. So there are pros and there are cons to being single your whole life. So comfortable with all of it. But it has been a process. It has been a journey. And I think that if you are someone who's listening to this and you're like, I've been single my whole life. It's always a good time to turn inwards and like ask yourself questions about yourself and also have fun going on dates. Like you are, it could all change within a minute. You could just walk down the street one day and then the, meet the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And then your single life is gone forever. You don't know what point that's going to happen. So live like your person is just around the corner. Live your best life, your best, best single life. Do all of the things you want to do whilst you're single. And then you'll, you will attract the person that you love and that you're meant to be with through those actions. Whether it happens in a year, whether it happens in 10, who fucking knows. But that intention is going to help you enjoy your entire life. Because the second you get with someone... And you fall madly in love. If you spent the last five years hating your life, like, oh my God, I want to be in a relationship. I want to be, uh, I want to be with someone so bad. Da, 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 da. You'll then fall in love and then you'll go, wow, I wasted five years being so sad. That's my two piece. This woman said so much without saying anything, but let's go with your analogy. If a person has a long job history on their resume, the first thing I would ask is why they left each job. If they say it's because they weren't passionate about it, that's a giant red flag. It tells me they are guided by emotions and can't commit to anything. But seeing as you compared your singleness to going in and out of jobs, and in your analogy, jobs are men, then how many men have you been with? Did you leave them all because of an emotion? Is it because none of them excited you? Because that indicates you belong to the streets and have an unstable life. Now, my question is, if you're doing so poorly with relationships or can't find a partner, why don't you approach men yourself? Why do women keep complaining that men don't approach them, don't want them, or stay away from them? Why don't you make the first move? Are you afraid of rejection? I'm just telling you that if you wait for things to come to you, you'll end up lonelier than Adam on Mother's Day. Don't wait, take action, because the wall doesn't forgive. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. 
We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think are the reasons there are so many single women? Why do you think women are having a hard time finding a partner? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.